Hello and welcome to this technical webinar for the 284, customizing the control solution for your application and heating plant. The Boiler Control 284 is designed to operate up to four boilers to accurately maintain a target water temperature. The 284 operates any combination of condensing and non-condensing boilers that are either modulating, single stage or two stage to provide a flexible and cost-effective mixed boiler plant solution with better system performance. As a result, it can be applied to a variety of different applications and heating plant designs. The wiring and the settings are what will allow you to create a more customized control solution. My name is Elizabeth Brown. I am a technical support specialist here at Techmar Controls and I will be your host for today's technical webinar. This is a level two presentation a follow-up to the introductory webinar, which can be found on our website if you missed it earlier. We recommend that you start with the first presentation for an overview of the capabilities of the 284, and then watch this presentation for an in-depth guide to specific wiring and programming. We'll begin by revisiting the five applications, as featured in the data brochure and as outlined in the introductory webinar. In this presentation, however, we'll have a particular focus on the wiring and the essential settings for each of those applications. The applications that we've included show a variety of different inputs and outputs, so by going through each one, our intention is that you'll have a very strong comfort level with the capabilities of this control and be very confident in how to wire and program it for the application you have in mind. We'll then take a look at the menus in the 284 focusing on the new settings that allow for unmatched flexibility and superior control. Lastly, we'll look at a new feature for Techmar, the manual override. By going over the options in manual override, you'll see how we've made the 284 very simple to troubleshoot and test exactly the way you need to. These five applications are a representative sample of the typical applications that the 284 is designed to control. There are certainly many more applications that would be ideal fits for the 284, but these illustrate some common representations of the target markets and systems for this control. We have intentionally shown a variety of mechanical equipment and sensor options to illustrate the versatility and the flexibility of this control. Now, if you have the application brochure handy and you want to follow along, we will be looking at each application in the same order as it appears in the brochure. In this first application, we have two single-stage non-condensing boilers and two modulating condensing boilers that are being operated to provide heat for indirect domestic hot water, a set point load, and space heating zones that are equipped with TRVs. You'll also notice dual primary pumps. Now these pumps can be sequenced for standby operation. We can't do a two-stage operation, but we can do standby. You'll notice here we are doing primary pump sequencing and indirect domestic hot water. Now in the 274 and 275, we had to choose one or the other. We couldn't do both at the same time, but now we can. So another big advantage to the 284 boiler control. Whenever we're doing primary pump sequencing, we of course have to provide proof of flow. In this case, we're doing that with the flow sensor F1. We can connect a flow sensor to the 284 and have it measure flow for monitoring purposes only or in this case, we can choose to have it measure flow and provide proof of flow for the primary pump sequencing. As soon as we have that flow sensor and a boiler supply sensor and a boiler return sensor, the 284 will also automatically calculate the energy usage of the system. Now that information can be reported to a building automation system. Other information that we can communicate to a building automation system include the boiler inlet temperature, and individual boiler outlet temperatures. You can see each of these boilers has its own boiler outlet sensor so that we can report individual boiler outlet temperatures instead of just the supply temperature for the group as we have done in the past. Because we have the boiler inlet sensor and individual boiler outlet sensors, we can also do a delta T calculation for each of those boilers, and that can also be communicated to a building automation system. You can see we have attached the 284 to a building automation system, and we are communicating with either Modbus or BACnet IP. It's one or the other, we can't do both. We are also connected to a gateway 483, 
and we can communicate certain information to the gateway using the TechMarnet 4 communication. We have connected to an outdoor sensor and that's so we can provide a reset water temperature for the space heating zones. We're also controlling a combustion air damper. And you can see in this case we're using that end switch to provide combustion air proof to the 284. This is optional. We can control the combustion air damper without providing proof, but if we've configured the 284 to provide proof, then we will not operate the heating plant until we get that proof. This slide features the bottom half of the control, and this is where we connect our pumps and our boilers. Starting at the left-hand side, we have our primary pump connections. In this case, we are doing a standby operation of the primary pump, so we have two. Notice how we've separated the primary pump terminals with color. So P1 is white, and then we have another color for P2, just to make it easier when we are wiring. We've done the same thing with the boiler banks. So boiler 1 and boiler 3 terminals are in white, to make it easy to distinguish which terminals are for which boiler. Our first two boilers are single stage on-off boilers, so we've connected the stage 1 terminals to the TT on the boiler. Boilers 3 and 4 are modulating boilers. Now these modulating boilers happen to also require an enable. So we've not only connected the plus minus modulating terminals to the boiler, we've also connected the stage 1 terminals to the TT on the boiler. Even though we've configured this to be a modulating boiler, the stage 1 contacts will close just in case you are using a modulating boiler that does require the power enable. Then we have our boiler pumps. Again, you'll notice the same color distinction between pump terminals. Now, in the 275, if you happen to use an on-off boiler, there was no way for you to also control that boiler pump. But now we have dedicated boiler terminals and dedicated boiler pump terminals. So it doesn't matter what type of boiler you're using, you can control it and its pump. On the right hand side we have our power in, of course it's 115 line voltage, and we have the terminals for the indirect domestic hot water pump. You'll notice all of these pump terminals are dry contacts, and we can switch up to 230 volt, 5 amp, 1 third horsepower through these terminals. This slide is showing the top half of the 284, and this is where we connect our calls, our sensors, and our communication. Starting on the left-hand side, we see our flow-proof call terminals. Now, in this case, we are using a flow sensor to provide proof of flow. So we connect a jumper across these flow-proof call terminals. If we were using a different type of flow-proofing device, we would, of course, connect that to the proof call terminals. So it's only when we are using a flow sensor to provide proof of flow that we install the jumper across those terminals. Our next proof call is combustion air proof, and of course we would bring the combustion air damper end switch back to the 284 to provide that proof call. Up to 24 volts can be passed through the switch, and as I said in the previous slide, boiler operation cannot occur until proof is present, and if proof is lost during operation, the boiler plan is sequenced off. Our next call is our heat call. Now in this case, we are doing space heating with zones that are equipped with TRVs. So we don't have any zone valve end switches to bring back for a heat call. We also don't have any thermostats that can switch on and off to provide a heat call. So in this case, we have installed a jumper across the heat call terminals to provide a permanent heat call. You'll notice there is nothing connected to the indirect domestic hot water call terminals, even though we are doing indirect domestic hot water in this application. And the reason is because we are using a domestic hot water sensor instead. So the sensor is connected, meaning we don't need anything connected to the call terminals. If we were using an aquastat instead, of course the aquastat would be connected to those terminals. Our set point call is being switched. This could be switched by a classic thermostat or a classic set point control. And then we move on to our sensors. Our flow sensor is a three-wire connection to the control. You can see it is easy to distinguish because, again, we are reversing the color. So we go from the gray color to the white color for the flow sensor. Now, the 284 supports an analog Vortex-style flow sensor, such as the Vortex series from Grunfoss. Our other sensors are the outdoor sensor, 
And we have eight other sensors that include the boiler supply sensor, the boiler return sensor, the boiler inlet sensor, and individual boiler outlet sensors. You'll notice up here our dip switches for external flow proof and external combustion air proof are in the on position. Since we are doing flow proof and combustion air proof, it is essential that the dip switch be placed in the on position. Next we'll find our communication terminals. Now since we are communicating to a building automation system using either BACnet or Modbus, we have shown both of those connections. The BACnet connection is through an RJ45 port at the top of the 284 control. And our Modbus connection comes through terminals 40, 41, and 42. You'll also see this auxiliary relay. And the auxiliary relay connection is being used to control the combustion air damper. This relay can be used to control either a combustion air damper or a recirculation pump for domestic hot water applications. In this case, obviously, we'll set it to control the combustion air damper. On this slide, we're looking at the essential settings for this application. Now, one of the things that's different in the 284 is that a source menu exists for each of the boilers. And it's in this source menu that you enable the boiler and specify what type of boiler it is. If you remember, boilers 1 and 2 in our application were single stage on-off boilers. We enable them by selecting auto. We say no to the condensing question. And for boil type, they are both one stage. Boilers 3 and 4 are condensing modulating boilers. They are enabled by selecting auto. This time, condensing is yes. And the boil type is mod for modulating. The rest of the essential settings are in the setup menu. The first one that comes up is the application mode. In this case, we are in the reset application mode to provide outdoor temperature reset water temperature for the space heating. Now this application mode will allow us to configure separate water temperatures for IDHW and for the set point load. As I said, the auxiliary relay can be used to control either a combustion air damper or a domestic hot water recirculation pump. In this case, of course, we're using it to control the combustion air damper, so we select DMPR for damper. We are doing primary pump sequencing, so we have two primary pumps. To enable them, we select auto. Now you'll see a bunch of IDHW settings, and this is because we have made a move away from the mode settings that you're familiar with in previous controls. Mode settings are not overly intuitive, so you would have to refer to a manual to understand which mode you should be in. We wanted to make the 284 simple. So what we did is we took away those modes, and in this case, you will specify, do you want domestic hot water? And if so, tell us some information about how it is piped. So we do have indirect domestic hot water, so mode is on. Where is our indirect domestic hot water? It's located on the boiler system side. If this were attached to one of the boilers, then it would be near boiler piping. But in this case, it is on the boiler system side, so we select boil. Are we using an indirect domestic hot water sensor? Yes, we are. We turn that on. Do we need the primary pump to operate for indirect domestic hot water? Well, in this case, the IDHW is piped in parallel. So no, we do not need that primary pump to operate. We turn it off. Again, similar to IDHW, if we're doing set point, we must turn that mode to on. And then we specify, do we need the primary pump to operate? Our set point load is also piped in parallel. So no, we do not need the primary pump to operate. We'll turn that off. We do have a flow sensor connected to the 284, so we'll turn flow sensor on. And because we're using that flow sensor to provide proof of flow, we must select a flow proof percentage. This is the percentage of full flow that must be achieved to provide proof. Now, if you're using a flow sensor for measurement purposes only, not to provide proof of flow, then you would select off. Application two shows four modulating boilers that are being operated to provide space heating using outdoor temperature reset. And the fourth boiler is also operating to provide heat for an indirect domestic hot water load. Now this is what we call near boiler piping for the indirect domestic hot water, and it can only be done on the fourth boiler. One of the benefits of this type of piping is that you can have simultaneous indirect domestic hot water and space heating. When we are doing indirect domestic hot water, P6 will turn off 
P7 will turn on so that the fourth boiler is strictly providing heat for the indirect domestic hot water load. The remaining boilers can operate to provide heat for the space heating load. You'll notice again we have two primary pumps so that we can sequence them in a standby operation or provide equal runtime operation if that's what we choose to do. In this case we are not providing proof of flow with a flow sensor, we are using current switches instead. We still have our boiler supply sensor and our boiler return sensor, but note that without that flow sensor we cannot calculate the energy usage to the load. We have our boiler inlet sensor at S5 and individual boiler outlet sensors. That will allow us to measure the temperature coming out of each boiler and will allow us to do a delta T calculation across each of those boilers. Taking a look at the bottom half of the control for this application and starting on the left hand side, we have our two primary pump connections. Again, easy to distinguish which terminals are for which pump because of the color coding. Then we have our four boiler banks. Each of these boilers is a modulating boiler, but all boilers will require the modulating signal as well as a power enable. So we connect the mod plus minus terminals and the stage one contacts to the TT contacts on the boiler. We have our four boiler pumps. Again, the color coding makes it easy to distinguish which terminals are for which boiler. We have our power in at terminals 83 and 84. And lastly, we have the connection for the indirect domestic hot water pump. Again, I want to state that all of these boiler pump terminals are dry contacts only. There's no powered outputs. Taking a look at the top half of the control and starting on the left hand side, we have our flow proof call terminals. Now in this case we are using current switches to provide proof of flow. So those two current switches are being connected in parallel to the flow proof call terminals. And since we are doing proof of flow, we have to make sure the dip switch is set to external flow proof. Our heat call terminal is being switched likely through a thermostat that is non-communicating, so one of our classic thermostats, perhaps even our new 518 thermostat. We do not have indirect domestic hot water call terminal here because again, just like in the first application, we are controlling the indirect domestic hot water with a domestic hot water sensor, so we'll leave those terminals blank. Coming to our sensors, we have our outdoor sensor to provide outdoor temperature reset to the space heating load. And we have our indirect domestic hot water sensor, boiler supply, boiler return, boiler inlet, and individual boiler outlet sensors. Here are the essential settings for our second application. Again, we start with the source menu for each of those boilers. We have to turn all those boilers on by selecting auto. Then we specify if the boilers are condensing. In this case, they are, so we select yes. Boil type, in this case, is modulating, same for all. Now, this does have the same feature that you're used to in previous controls, which is the copy feature. So a faster way to set this up would be to copy the settings from boiler one to boilers two, three, and four. The rest of the essential settings are in the setup menu. Just like in the first application, our mode is reset, and that allows us to provide outdoor temperature reset water to the space heating load. It'll also allow us to set up a different water temperature for the indirect domestic hot water. Again, we're doing primary pump sequencing, so we turn pump one and pump two on by selecting auto. Are we doing indirect domestic hot water? Yes, turn it on. Where is the location of the indirect domestic hot water? In this case, we are doing near boiler piping, so we select near. Are we using an indirect domestic hot water sensor? Yes, we are, so we turn that on. Application 3 shows four two-stage non-condensing boilers that are being operated to provide a fixed set point temperature for a dedicated domestic hot water load. Notice the domestic hot water recirculation pump. This pump can always be operational, so that hot water is always readily available, or it can be operated on a schedule to provide energy savings. You'll also notice that there is a domestic hot water sensor in the tank. That is the only way we can control the domestic hot water operation when we're doing dedicated domestic hot water. There is no option for an aquastat in this case. You'll also notice we again have our boiler inlet sensor and individual boiler outlet sensors. 
which will allow us to monitor the behavior of each of our four boilers. Taking a look at the bottom half of the control for this application, and it's certainly one of our more simple installations, looking at the primary pump terminals, they're both empty because of course in this application we have no primary pumps to control. We have four boiler banks and we're going to be connecting stage one and stage two terminals to the stage one and stage two TT contacts on each of our two stage on off boilers. We also have a boiler pump for each of our four boilers. And lastly, we have our 115 volt power in to provide power to the control. The top half of the control looks even more simple than the bottom half. All we have connected here are our sensors for domestic hot water, boiler inlet, and our individual boiler outlet sensors, and the auxiliary relay is being used to control the domestic hot water recirculation pump. The essential settings for application 3, starting with the source menu. We have four boilers. All of those boilers are non-condensing two-stage. So we've enabled the boiler by selecting auto. We've said no, it's not condensing and the boil type is a two-stage. And that's the same for all of those boilers. Again, this is a perfect situation where we would use the copy feature to copy the settings from boiler one to boilers two, three, and four. The other two essential settings are in the setup menu. Our application mode in this case is dedicated domestic hot water. And that will only allow one water temperature. That's all we need in this application. The one water temperature for the fixed set point of dedicated domestic hot water. Our auxiliary relay is being used to control a domestic hot water recirculation pump. So that is the essential setting that we choose, not damper. We're using domestic hot water recirculation. Application 4 shows two modulating condensing boilers that are being operated to provide heat for space heating and for indirect domestic hot water. The boiler target temperature for the space heating load is determined from outdoor temperature reset and is fine-tuned with indoor temperature feedback provided by the Tech Marnet thermostats. Outdoor temperature reset combined with indoor temperature feedback saves energy by operating the boiler plant at the lowest possible temperatures, which is particularly ideal for condensing type boilers where the lower the water temperature, the greater the efficiency. You can see the indirect domestic hot water is piped on the boiler system side. We have four space heating zones controlled with valves. Now these valves are going to be operated by the TN2 wiring center 313 based on communication with the Tecmarnet 2 thermostats. You can also see we have connected to a gateway 482 or 483 depending on whether we want remote access and monitoring capability or whether we want to integrate with the home automation system. We have our boiler supply sensor and our boiler return sensor. However, there is no flow sensor here so we cannot do energy usage monitoring. We have our boiler inlet sensor and two individual boiler outlet sensors so we can look at the performance of each of our boilers. We can look at the outlet temperature of our boilers and also do a boiler delta T calculation. We also have a vent sensor that's represented by S8. Now this is particularly useful for condensing type boilers when the vent material is non-metallic. So we can be mindful of the vent temperatures with this vent sensor and limit it so that we don't do any damage to the non-metallic vent material. Looking at the bottom half of the control and starting on the left hand side, we have only one primary pump connection because we are not doing standby operation in this case. We only have one primary pump, P1. Our boiler banks, we have two modulating boilers and both of these boilers need a modulating signal and a power enable that's provided by the contact closure at the stage one terminals. Jumping over to our boiler pumps, each of our modulating boilers will have a boiler pump. This is switched through a dry contact. And of course we have our indirect domestic hot water pump and power into the control. Taking a look at the top half of the control for this application and again starting on the left hand side, you'll see all of the call terminals are empty. Now we're not doing flow proof, we're not doing combustion air proof, so it makes sense that those call terminals are empty. You'll notice too that the dip switches for external flow proof and external combustion air proof are in the off position. 
We are doing space heating, so why are the space heating call terminals empty? Well, that is because we are communicating the heat call through TechMarnet, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. We are doing indirect domestic hot water, but we're using a sensor, not an aquastat. So these call terminals are also empty. And we're not doing set point load, so we have nothing to connect the set point call terminals to. Looking at our sensors, we have an outdoor sensor to provide outdoor temperature reset to the space heating zones. We also have our boiler supply, boiler return, domestic hot water sensor. S8 is our vent sensor, which we talked about on the previous slide, and that will allow us to monitor vent temperatures. And if we choose to, we can even limit vent temperatures in order to protect that non-metallic vent material that we often see in place when we have condensing type boilers. The remaining sensors are the boiler inlet sensor and the boiler outlet sensors for each of our two boilers. The wiring sensor 313 is connected to boiler bus B. We have four bus terminals on the 284. We've chosen bus B just because it's the first one. We could have connected the 313 to any of them really. The gateway 482, 483 is connected to the same bus. Even though all of those four buses are the same water temperature, in order for the gateway to see the thermostats on the 313, it must be tied to the same bus, and that's that point-to-point -point communication. Now because we have these four buses and we can connect up to 24 devices on each bus, that means we can have up to 96 devices. So it really allows us for a large commercial type system. One thing to note, however, is it is only boiler bus. We cannot accommodate any mixed buses on the 284. They are all boiler bus. These are the essential settings for application 4, starting with the source menus for each boiler. We have two boilers, so we enable both of those boilers by selecting auto. Are they condensing? Yes, they are. What is the type? They are modulating. Boiler 1 and Boiler 2 are the same. They are configured in exactly the same way. The rest of the essential settings are in the setup menu. The application mode is reset, which will allow us to provide outdoor temperature reset to the space heating zones. It will also allow us a separate water temperature for the indirect domestic hot water. We are not doing primary pump sequencing. We have one primary pump, which is enabled with the auto selection. Pump 2 does not exist, so we turn that off. Are we doing indirect domestic hot water? Yes, we are. Turn the mode on. Where is it located? On the boiler system side, so we select boil. Are we using an indirect domestic hot water sensor? In this case, yes, we are, so we turn that on. And do we need the primary pump to operate when we're doing indirect domestic hot water? No, we don't, because it's piped in parallel, so we turn that off. Our last application, application 5, shows two modulating non-condensing boilers that are being operated to provide a boiler target temperature for space heating and for indirect domestic hot water. We have two primary pumps that are being operated for standby and for equal runtime rotation. Proof of flow in this case is being provided by a pressure differential switch, even though we do have a flow sensor, F1, on our system. So in this case, we're only using that flow sensor to provide flow monitoring. We are not using it to provide proof of flow that's being done by the pressure differential switch. We have another sensor here, S8, which is a pressure sensor. Now this will measure pressure so that we can monitor how our system is performing. We have four space heating zones. They are all equipped with TRVs. Now in this case, we also want to have indoor temperature feedback. So what we've done is we've connected a Tecmarnet 4 thermostat in the mechanical room to the 284 and we've installed indoor sensors in each of those units. The indoor sensors will be connected to the 538 thermostat in series parallel wiring so that we can have indoor temperature feedback from each of those units. Now because we're doing series parallel wiring the sensors must be in a perfect square so we could have four sensors nine sensors, our next group of sensor number would be 16. So we are limited, it has to be a perfect square number just because of how the series parallel wiring works. Back down to the mechanical, we have two domestic hot water pumps. These are also being sequenced. In this case, they could be for standby, they could also be for two stage. That's because the 284 isn't controlling the sequencing of those pumps. 
a 132 pump sequencer is. So what's happening is the 284 will provide a pump demand to the 132 and the 132 in turn will sequence the domestic hot water pumps. The 132 will also need a proof of flow that's provided here by a flow switch. Again in our system we have boiler supply sensor, boiler return sensor, a boiler inlet sensor, and a boiler outlet sensor on each of our two boilers. We are also controlling a combustion air damper and combustion air proof is coming back to the 284. You can also see we have connected to a gateway 482 or a 483 depending on whether we want remote access and monitoring capability or whether we want to integrate with the home automation system. Lastly, we have an outdoor sensor so that we can provide outdoor temperature reset for those space heating zones. Taking a look at the bottom half of the control for this application and starting on the left hand side, you'll see we have our primary pumps, two of them because we are doing sequencing. We have two boilers that are being connected here and they're both modulating boilers that require the modulating signal and the power enable through the stage one contact closure. We have our two boiler pumps connected, of course our line voltage in for power, and you can see here how we've connected the pump sequencer 132 to the IDHW pump terminals on the 284 so that that contact closure to operate an indirect domestic hot water pump is being used to generate a pump demand on the 132. Now to take a look at the top half of the control you can see we've connected the pressure differential switch to the flow proof call terminals and we have connected the combustion air damper end switch to the combustion air proof call terminals as well. Both of those dip switches are in the on position. This time because we do have a pressure sensor, we've connected our pressure sensor to the appropriate terminals 11 and 12. You can see to make it easier we even write the word pressure sensor underneath. And we do have a flow sensor in this application, so the flow sensor is connected to the appropriate terminals 13, 14, and 15. We have our outdoor sensor for outdoor temperature reset, our boiler supply, boiler return sensors, boiler inlet, and individual boiler outlet sensors. Because we are controlling a combustion air damper, that is connected to the auxiliary relay. Here's a continuation of the top half of the control where we're looking particularly at how we're connecting the Tecmarnet Thermostat 538 to the 284. You can see we've connected it directly to the bus B terminals. Now we can do that with the Tecmarnet 4 thermostat. We can connect the TN4 and C directly to the TN4 and C for the boiler bus terminals on the 284. We cannot obviously do that with the Tecmarnet 2 thermostat. Must be a Tecmarnet 4 thermostat. You can see our sensor array is wired in series parallel to our sensor terminals and we did you have to use 9. Our options here are 4, 9, or 16 if you remember. It has to be that perfect square number. We've connected the gateway 482 or 483 to the same bus terminals as is the thermostat. Now remember it has to be point to point with the gateway devices so if we're connecting the thermostat to bus B we must also connect that to the gateway. Here are the essential settings for application 5. Again we start with the source menu for each of our boilers. We enable the boilers with auto. Are they condensing? No. What type are they? Modulating. The remaining essential settings are in the setup menu. Our application mode is reset so that we can provide outdoor temperature reset water temperature for our space heating zones. We're doing pump sequencing in this case so pump 1 and pump 2 are enabled with the auto setting. We are doing indirect domestic hot water. We turn mode on and we specify the location. It is on the boiler system side so we select boil. Are we using an indirect domestic hot water sensor? Yes, we are. Do we need the primary pump to operate for indirect domestic hot water? No, because it's piped in parallel, so we turn that off. In this case, we have to specify what is the auxiliary relay controlling. It's controlling a combustion air damper, so we select DMPR for damper. The flow sensor is on. We have a flow sensor. Notice here we are not 
enabling the flow proof because the flow proof is being provided, if you remember, by the pressure differential switch. We also have a pressure sensor and we have to turn that on as well in the setup menu. Now that we've reviewed each of the applications, we'll take a look at the menus of the 284, starting with the source menu. The source menu is new to the 284, and as we covered in the applications, a source menu exists for each boiler. We need to configure each piece of equipment individually because the 284 is so flexible and it can accommodate a variety of different boiler types, we have to tell the 284 what type it is that we've connected to it. And this is what allows for ultimate flexibility. It allows us to customize the operation of the 284 based on the heat sources of your particular heating plant. Now most of the settings in this menu will be familiar to you, including modulation delay, fire delay, boiler mass, etc. We're only going to look at the new settings in this webinar. The condensing or non-condensing question, boiler type, and the max outlet temperature, which I think you'll really like. These settings are what are going to drive the configuration options that come later in the setup menu. We saw already in the essential settings for the applications how we had to enable the boilers that we were using and also specify what type they were. The boiler settings in the source menu are what will unlock further settings in the setup menu to customize the operation of your unique combination of boilers. You will tell the control if it is a one stage or a two stage on off boiler, a modulating boiler, or if you need an EMS 1 or EMS 2 signal output. You will also specify if it's a condensing boiler or a non condensing boiler. Now boiler groups are automatically assembled for on-off condensing and non-condensing boilers and for modulating condensing and non-condensing boilers. And once the control recognizes the type of boilers in the heating plant, that's when it can start using a customized algorithm path to get the most system efficiency. If you have a modulating boiler, it can be controlled with a percent modulation target or it can be controlled with a temperature based target. If you have the first, you need a modulation percent target. You can select that signal to be 0 to 10 volt or 4 to 20 milliamp. If you have a temperature based target boiler, you can select EMS1 or EMS2. EMS1 has rails of 50 degrees to 210 degrees. Now most boilers will allow you to program the rails on the ignition control to match this EMS1 output. If you have Wiesman Vitadin's boilers, then you can use the EMS2. The big news here is that we can now control multiple Wiesman Vitadin's boilers. So that makes the 284 far superior and much less costly than the cascading controls you may have had to use in the past. The EMS2 rails are 81 to 176 degrees Fahrenheit, a perfect match for the Wiesman Vitadin's boilers. Each of the applications we looked at showed all of our boilers having individual boiler outlet sensors. Now we can use those outlet sensors just to monitor the outlet temperature for each of our boilers or, new to the 284, we can also use those sensors to act as a limiting device. We can select a maximum outlet temperature for each boiler. The range here is 120 to 240 Fahrenheit. If we don't want to have that limiting, we only want to monitor that boiler outlet temperature, then we can turn this max setting off. But it does give us the opportunity to limit individual boiler temperatures. Fantastic new feature that again sets the 284 apart from the rest. So those covered the settings that we can see in the source menu for each of the boilers. Now we're coming to the setup menu and that's the other menu that we saw in the essential settings for each of those applications. This is where the bulk of the system configuration takes place. The items we're going to cover in the setup menu are items that are new to the 284. We're going to look at application mode, EMS signal. We're going to look at boiler minimum and how it applies that boiler minimum only to boilers that need one. We'll look at the primary pump sequencing, the auxiliary relay configuration, how we sequence modulating boilers and on-off boilers, how we rotate each of those different boiler groups. We'll look at the indirect domestic hot water and dedicated domestic hot water set point loads, and we'll talk some more about that vent monitoring aspect that we showed you earlier in one of the applications, and the flow sensor. 
The 284 has five application modes, so you can customize the operation and the allowable water temperatures for your particular application. The one you saw most often in the applications that we saw is the outdoor temperature reset, which is called reset app mode. Now, as we stated in the applications, this allows three separate water temperatures. We have the water temperature for space heating, which is our outdoor temperature reset water temperature. And we can also set higher temperatures for domestic hot water and for set point loads. Our next application mode is if we are receiving input from an energy management system. Now this will also allow three separate water temperatures. The EMS will communicate a space heating temperature, but we can also connect domestic hot water and set point calls to the 284 and configure two additional water temperatures for each of those. We can set it up to have a fixed set point water temperature. So that's the application mode SETP for set point. In that case, we are not doing space heating. We cannot provide outdoor temperature reset for a space heating load. We can have our set point water temperature. In addition, we can have an indirect domestic hot water temperature. So we can have two separate water temperatures if we are in set point application mode. We did see in one of the applications the dedicated domestic hot water mode, DDHW. And in that mode, we only have one allowable water temperature, which is for domestic hot water. Lastly, we have the building automation system application mode, BAS. And in this mode, we are receiving one water temperature being communicated over the BAS. And we don't know what that one water temperature is. It could be a water temperature that's applied to space heating or domestic hot water or set point. But we're only getting one water temperature being communicated in. We cannot connect any additional calls to the 284 if we are in BAS application mode. By selecting application mode EMS, the 284 will convert an external 0 to 10 or 2 to 10 volt signal, you will actually specify which one it is, from an energy management system into a boiler target temperature. What's new on the 284 is now we have dedicated terminals for the EMS input. We're not sharing that with the outdoor sensor terminals anymore. This is a one-way communication. The 284 is receiving a water temperature from an EMS. It is not communicating anything back to the EMS. One thing I do want to make clear is we use the term EMS a couple times on the 284. EMS is referred to the input we receive from an energy management system. EMS 1 and EMS 2 are outputs that we use to control boilers that require a temperature based target. So keep that distinction clear in your mind. EMS versus EMS 1 and EMS 2 which are boiler outputs. You don't enter a boiler minimum temperature in the source menu for each boiler. You do it in the setup menu. And what the 284 does is it applies that boiler minimum to all of the non-condensing boilers. And it does not apply it to a condensing boiler where we want to operate at the lowest temperatures possible. So you can set that boiler minimum up to a temperature ranging from 60 to 180 degrees. Of course, if you're using all condensing boilers, you can set this boiler minimum to off. As we saw in the applications, the 284 can do primary pump sequencing for standby operation only, not for two stage, just standby. We did talk about this in the introductory webinar, but we'll talk about it again here. What's new in the 284 is that there is two attempts to try and operate the primary pump. So we operate the lead pump first, if we do not receive proof of flow, we will turn off the lead pump and try and operate the lag pump. If we still do not receive proof of flow, we will turn off the lag pump and try and operate the lead pump again. If still we do not receive proof of flow, we will turn off the lead pump and try and operate the lag pump one more time. So we're trying to operate the lead and the lag pump twice. So this is to make sure there really is indeed a problem before we shut the entire system down. We can also configure the primary pumps to have equal runtime rotation. We can select rotation to occur from a time ranging from 12 to 180 hours. Our default is 96 hours, and if we don't want rotation, we can just turn that off. Rotation is done when the lead pump is off. If the lead pump runs continuously, then the rotation is delayed for up to 12 hours. If the pump still runs continuously and rotation is required, the control will shut off the lead pump 
and one second later, the standby pump will be turned on. We saw in the applications that the auxiliary relay can be used to control a DHW recirc pump or a combustion air damper. So in the setup menu, we have to configure the auxiliary relay to control either the recirc pump or the damper, or if nothing is connected, then we turn that auxiliary relay off. It's useful to note that if the external combustion air proof dip switch is in the on position, then this setting is locked at damper. So the control assumes that if you're providing proof of combustion air, you must also be operating a combustion air damper through the auxiliary relay. You specify the boiler type and whether it has a condensing or non-condensing nature in the source menu for each boiler. You select the staging or the modulation modes for those groups of boilers in the setup menu. Now if you have more than one condensing two-stage boiler, you will select a staging mode for that group of boilers. Likewise, if you have more than one non-condensing two-stage boiler, you select a staging mode for that group of boilers. We operate the staging for condensing and non-condensing groups differently because they operate differently. Likewise, if you have more than one condensing modulating boiler, you select a modulation mode for that group of boilers. And if you have more than one non-condensing modulating boiler, you select a modulation mode for that group of boilers. These groups should have different settings. It is critical if we want to achieve maximum efficiency. Now, we're not going to go into the differences between the low, low, high, high and the low, high, low, high staging modes. And likewise, we're not going to go into the differences between sequential and parallel modulation modes. We assume that you are familiar with these. If you are not, we have created an additional module that explains the differences in these staging and modulation modes. And that module is available for downloading off our website. How do we sequence the mixed plant? We know we cannot stage all boilers the same way because each boiler group and type needs to be sequenced with efficiency in mind. And this is a feature that sets the 284 apart from cascade controls, that we recognize the difference in boiler types and sequence them accordingly. So in this example, we have two two-stage non-condensing on-off boilers, and we have two modulating condensing boilers. The 284 allows me to select a staging mode for my two two-stage on-off boilers and a modulation mode for my two modulating boilers. This is truly unique in the 284 boiler control, the ability to select settings that will operate your mixed boiler plant to achieve maximum efficiency. Equal runtime rotation is selected for condensing boiler groups and for non-condensing boiler groups. So if there are at least two boilers that are configured to be condensing, you can select equal runtime rotation or not for that group. If there are at least two boilers that are configured for non-condensing, you can select equal runtime rotation for that group if you choose to. We operate each group separately because the runtimes for those two different boiler groups will likely be very different. Rotation is fixed at 48 hours and it's forced at 60 hours. Indirect domestic hot water is possible if we are in application mode reset, EMS, or set point. Now, as we discussed before, we have moved away from domestic hot water modes because they were not very intuitive and they required someone to constantly refer to a manual to explain those modes. Instead of modes, we're going to specify how the indirect domestic hot water is piped. Let's take a look at the top image. We can see that indirect domestic hot water is piped near the last boiler. In the 284, we would turn the indirect domestic hot water mode on. The next setting that we get to configure is the location. This is near boiler piping, so we select near. Now near boiler piping is only possible off the fourth boiler. Now in this case, obviously, we only have two boilers, so how does that work? Well, we would enable the first boiler, turn boilers two and three off, and connect our last boiler to the fourth boiler bank terminals. So we're going to enable boiler 1, turn boilers 2 and 3 off, and enable boiler 4 so that the indirect can come off boiler number 4. Taking a look at the bottom image, this time we don't have near boiler piping, we have boiler system piping. 
As soon as we set our location to boil, then we have access to more settings. The first being, how many boilers should we operate to generate heat for domestic hot water? Now, I've chosen two here, but I could have chosen one. If I had more boilers, I could go up to four. We also select if we want our primary pump to operate during domestic hot water. Now in this case, the domestic hot water is piped in parallel, so I don't need that primary pump to operate. I turn it off. Then you will select if you want priority over space heating. Now, this is all we're going to go into for the indirect domestic hot water settings, but we have created an additional module on domestic hot water operation and settings that is available for download on our website. So if you're not clear about something or, or want more explanation or go into greater detail about the settings, then you can download that module off our website. Our featured application 3 showed you application mode DDHW for dedicated domestic hot water. Now if you remember, in this application mode we can accommodate a single water temperature. So those boilers will be operated to maintain the domestic hot water set point temperature. In this application you must use a domestic hot water sensor, we cannot accommodate an aquastat. And because we're using a sensor you will set up the set point temperature and the differential. Of course, as you saw in application 3, you will also configure the auxiliary relay to operate the recirculation pump. You can provide a set point water temperature for a set point load in application mode reset, set point, or EMS. You do need to configure a set point call for all three of those application modes. So the 284 needs to receive that set point call to begin the set point operation. And the set point call can come from contact closure at the set point call terminals, or it can come from the TN4 communication if you've connected a set point control 161 or 162 to the bus terminals on the 284. You could also have a set point call and temperature in BAS mode. But that is something the BAS is writing to the 284. It's not something that you configure locally on the 284. Just like in indirect domestic hot water, we have to turn the mode on for set point operation. And that includes when you're in application mode set point. So even though you're telling the control, I want to operate for a set point load, a fixed set point, you still have to turn that mode on in the setup menu. You will also specify the primary pump operation. Do you need the primary pump to operate for set point? In this case, the set point load is piped in parallel. We do not need that set point or the primary pump to run for set point, and so we would turn the primary pump off. You also configure priority, so you can turn priority on or off. Should your set point load have priority over space heating? Sometimes you may want that, probably most often you do not want that. We mentioned in one of the earlier applications that the 284 has the ability to monitor and, if you want to, to limit vent temperatures. So there is an optional vent sensor that can be connected to the 284 to measure the flue gas temperature in the vent pipe. Now the primary reason for doing so would be if you have condensing boilers with a non-metallic vent material. Condensing boilers have typical exhaust temperatures of up to 50 degrees Fahrenheit above the inlet water temperature. So you may need to keep an eye on those vent temperatures and limit them if they get too high. To limit the vent temperatures, you can set a max vent temperature, and this will act as a high limit. If the vent exhaust exceeds the vent maximum setting, the boiler plant will be shut down until the temperature drops 10 degrees Fahrenheit below that maximum setting. If you don't want to limit the vent temperatures, you simply want to monitor them, then you can set the vent max setting to off. I do want to say this is currently not supported. We do not have a vent sensor that is available to use with the 284 at this time. It is something that we are actively working on. It will be available soon, and of course we will let you know when it does become available. An analog vortex style flow sensor, like the Grunfoss Vortex series, can be used to both monitor and prove flow. And we saw this in our featured applications. We had one application where the flow sensor was being used to monitor flow and to prove flow for the primary pump sequencing. We had another application where that flow sensor was only used for monitoring purposes. If you are using a flow sensor, then you turn the flow sensor item on in the setup menu. 
And you also configure a flow range. Now the flow range depends on the model of flow sensor you're using. There are five different flow ranges to choose from in the setup menu. They're all in units of liters per minute and they go from 20 all the way up to 400. If you're using the flow sensor to also provide proof of flow, then you need to configure the flow proof setting. This is the percentage of full flow that will be used to provide proof within the proof delay time. And that delay time goes from 10 seconds to 3 minutes. So for example, you could have a situation where you want 80% of full flow to be achieved within a delay time of say 2 minutes in order to act as proof of that pump operation. This is particularly useful for ECM pumps where flow is varied. So in those situations you could select a lower percentage of full flow for the proof function. The BAS communication ability is certainly one of the most celebrated features of the 284 boiler control. Now the BAS menu contains a lot of settings. So many settings in fact that it has its own brochure. But we're not going to go over all of those settings in today's presentation. They are highly specialized settings that will not be applicable to your ability to support this product. And also, they are not easily understood by us. They are settings, however, that are easily understood by the control contractor. So let's leave that set up to the professionals. And instead, in this presentation, let's focus on enhancing our understanding of the wiring, what can be communicated to the BAS, and how it can be communicated to the BAS. The BAS communication is made possible through either Backnet IP or Modbus. It's one or the other, not both. And the connections are very straightforward. They're both on the top half of the control as we saw in the electrical diagrams for the applications. The Backnet IP connection uses CAT5 or CAT6 cable from an RJ45 port. And the Modbus connection uses shielded twisted pair cable with a signal ground and those go into clearly marked terminals 40, 41, and 42. So you can see the connection is very straightforward. What we're going to look at next is how to set up the different communication possibilities from the 284 to the BAS. The two settings that will be most meaningful to you in the BAS menu are BAS type and BAS monitor. So the BAS type is pretty straightforward. You will choose either BACnet or Modbus. And the BAS monitor, well that's one of the modes of the BAS and you will turn this monitor mode on or off. And we're going to look at the monitor mode and the other BAS mode, which is the temperature mode, and how those pertain to the application modes. So I know it's getting confusing. I'm talking about BAS modes and I'm talking about application modes, but there is some overlap in how those modes work to allow for different communication options. And we'll look at that on the next slide. As you can see, there are two BAS modes. There's BAS monitor mode and there is BAS temperature mode. Let's start with BAS monitor mode. This is available if you are in application mode reset, set point, dedicated domestic hot water, or EMS. So any one of these four application modes will allow you to turn on the BAS monitor mode. Now what does the BAS monitor mode allow you to do? Well, it will allow you to remotely monitor your system, so the 284 will communicate performance monitoring indicators to the BAS via BACnet or Modbus. You can also enable or disable boilers. If you are in outdoor temperature reset mode, then the BAS monitor mode will allow you to make some adjustments to the heat curve. So you can write room temperature, outdoor temperature, outdoor design, and terminal unit to the 284 in the BAS monitor mode. Of course that's only applicable when you're in outdoor reset application mode. Let's look at BAS temperature mode now. This is only available when you are in BAS application mode. And BAS temperature mode will allow for greater adjustment. So you can remotely adjust the set point call and temperature the BAS will write to the 284 a set point call and a set point temperature and the 284 will need both. You could also write the operation of the primary pumps and the indirect domestic hot water pump. You can enable those and disable those. 
and you can also enable and disable boilers. Now the BAS temperature mode allows for the same remote monitoring as in the monitor mode. So you still get to share those performance monitoring indicators from the 284 to the BAS through BACnet or Modbus. So those are the two BAS modes. You can see that they are dependent on the application mode that you're in. Now we just talked about sharing information from the 284 to the BAS, so communicating the performance monitoring indicators in the BAS temperature mode and monitor mode. And all that information is contained in the monitor menus. Yes, I said monitor menus. There is more than one. In the 284, each boiler has its own monitor menu, and that contains information that is specific to that boiler. Then you have a monitor menu for the overall system. We'll look at both of those monitor menus in the upcoming slides. In the 284, a monitor menu exists for each boiler, allowing you to have complete visibility over the operation of your heating equipment. The monitor menu for each boiler will contain the burner runtime, the boiler pump runtime, and both of these runtimes are in hours and they are updated every hour. Boiler cycles, boiler outlet low and high, and this is of course only applicable if you have an individual boiler outlet sensor, and the boiler temperature difference high. So this would be the maximum difference between the boiler inlet and the boiler outlet for that particular boiler. All of this information is communicated to a building automation system using BACnet or Modbus. Unfortunately at this time, this information is not available for communication to a Gateway 483. A separate monitor menu exists for the system performance information, and this monitor menu will not have a number attached to it. It will simply read monitor menu. Information in this menu includes the flow rate. Of course, you will only see flow rate if you've connected a flow sensor. The flow sensor must be a 0 to 10 volt analog vortex style flow sensor. And the flow rate units are either gallons per minute or meter cubes per hour. If you have that flow sensor and you have a boiler supply sensor and a boiler return sensor, the 284 will automatically do an energy usage calculation. That information is also stored in the monitor menu in units of therms or kilowatt hours. If you have connected a pressure sensor, then the monitor menu will also contain the system pressure information in units of PSI or kilopascals. We discussed the vent sensor earlier on. If you have connected a vent sensor, then this information will also be displayed in the monitor menu in units of degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. Other information in the monitor menu includes the primary pump runtime and the indirect domestic hot water pump runtime. Both of these runtimes are in hours, updated every hour. All of this information can be communicated to a building automation system. Unfortunately, at this time, the only information that is communicated to a Gateway 483 is the primary pump runtime and the indirect domestic hot water pump runtime. Some of you may be familiar with the toolbox menu found in some of the newer Tecmar products. The 284 also features a toolbox menu, which is a great place to start your troubleshooting should you need any. You can access all your troubleshooting information in this one toolbox menu. So this is where you'll see any errors that exist on the system. And what's new to the 284 is that an error message will scroll across the screen. So instead of having an error code like E01, we're actually going to give you an error message that says something like, check your outdoor sensor. So it makes it much easier for the maintenance person to figure out what could be wrong and then start addressing it. This is also where you can do a boiler bus device count. So that can help if there are any communication errors. The 284 will tell you what devices it's currently communicating with on each bus. It also stores the error history. So up to five items are stored in the error history. You can clear errors at any time from the history. The toolbox menu is also where you can change your access level, where you can reload factory default settings if you choose to. This is also where you can select the units for temperature, pressure, flow, and energy. Now this is a great start to troubleshooting, but how else can we troubleshoot our system? Manual override is an exciting new feature for Tecmar. This will let you commission, test, and troubleshoot at the touch of a button. Just press and hold the manual over button on the left side of the control for three seconds to access the manual override menu. 
There are five manual overrides for you to choose from so that you can test your system the way it needs to be tested. The first manual override mode is auto and this is just normal operating mode. The second mode is purge. Now this will allow you to purge the air from your system by operating the pumps for 72 hours. 72 hours is a fixed setting, you cannot change that. But if you do want to exit this mode earlier, then you can simply change your manual override mode back to auto. What's great about this purge setting is that unlike the max heat setting that existed in our previous controls, this will only operate the pumps. It will not operate the boilers. The max setting is similar to our max heat function in that it maintains a high boiler target. In this case, the boiler target will be 230 degrees Fahrenheit. This is also a fixed setting that cannot be changed. Now, how long will it operate that boiler for? Well, that is a setting called the timeout period that is set by the user. You can set that from a, to a time between one hour and 72 hours. So you do have control over the length of time that the boilers will be operating to maintain that target. If you do want to exit that earlier, then you simply change the manual override mode back to auto. Manual override off will force the entire system off. And manual override mode hand will let you test separate pieces of equipment individually. And we'll look at that more in the following slide. These are all the components that can be operated individually when we're in the hand manual override mode. We can operate the alert relay and the auxiliary relay. We can choose to operate primary pump one or two. We can operate the indirect domestic hot water pump and individual boiler pumps. And we can also operate our boiler. So we can specify we want boiler stage one or stage two. We can also specify a percent modulation for our modulating boilers. And we can even specify a boiler temperature if we have a boiler type EMS 1 or EMS 2. So this has a lot of flexibility. We can operate individual pieces of equipment separately to really isolate problems if they do exist in the system. To summarize, in today's presentation we reviewed the five target applications for the 284 as featured in the application brochure and as featured in the introductory webinar. But this time we went over the electrical wiring and the essential settings for each of those applications. Our intent is that after going through each of those applications in the greater detail, that you have a really strong comfort level with how to set up the 284 for your particular application, and that you have an appreciation for the degree of flexibility that this control has. Most of the essential settings that we visited were either in the setup menu or in the source menu for each boiler. Other menus that we reviewed today include the BAS menu, the monitor menu for each boiler, in addition to the system monitor menu, and the toolbox menu. We also introduced you to manual override, which is a new feature for Tecmar. Manual override will allow you to troubleshoot your system in such a way that you will be able to definitively locate a problem. The five modes let you test your system precisely the way you need and want to test it. As always, additional information can be found on our website, www.techmarkcontrols.com, where you can download the data and application brochures for the 284, along with the BAS brochure, which is, of course, new to the 284. You can also find additional 284 training modules on our website that go further into depth on outdoor temperature reset application mode and settings, staging and modulation modes, and domestic hot water operation for both indirect and dedicated applications. If you have any questions or comments on this presentation, please let us know. Email us at learn at and we will respond to you within the same day. Thank you so much for joining me. My name again is Elizabeth Brown and I hope you have a great rest of your day.